Hi, friends. What's on my mind today? Well, probably some of the same things that are on your mind today. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Uh, I wanted to make a video today about school shootings and guns. and I practiced the speech in my mind, wanting to paint a picture of what an AR-15 does to a small child's body. And it just got too graphic, so I'm not making that video. Um, I just give you what my last line was going to be. Uh, how about instead of focusing on the Second Amendment, this time we focus on the second grade. Well, the other thing that's on my mind is uh, inflation, of course. Um, it's not uh, any different here in Mexico. Prices are going up, and uh, unless you're very wealthy, you got to be worried about that. Um, yeah, gas here in Mexico is about four fifty a gallon now. So. Uh, that's part of the cost of going to Walmart and getting my groceries. Uh, one of the comments in my last video was left by, I, I wrote her name down, Sherry LaTulip. And she pointed out that uh, because of the cost of living, um, the COLA increase that Social Security is geared to, that we're probably going to get a raise uh, next year of 8.36%. Last year it was 5% raise, something like that. And for several years before that, it was nothing because the inflation rate was zero or close to it. Um, I did discover one thing in researching that, see if she was right or not, it appears that she is. Um, there is a U.S. savings bond geared to inflation. It's called a Series I bond. And uh, if you've got somewhere between $25 and $10,000 uh, to put somewhere that will help, let me tell you how this is working. A year ago, the interest rate uh, on uh, Series I bonds was three something percent. It's reset by law uh, according to uh, an inflation adjustment, twice a year, November 1st and May 1st. So, again, a year ago it was like 3% and something, and last November 1st, it automatically went up to 7.12% percent annual percentage rate return on the bond. And May 1st, this May 1st, May 1st, 2022, it went to 9.62% annual percentage return on a Series I bond. And I didn't believe that when I first read it, but uh, it's true. Go check it out if you have uh, a little bit of money to put somewhere that you want to get 9.62% return on. And uh, that seems pretty good unless you're doing something really proactive in real estate or whatever. If you're just investing in the market uh, in these volatile times, 9.62% seems pretty good to me. Uh, Treasurydirect.gov. Check it out. Uh, and that'll probably be one of the very, very very rare instances I ever get a shout out to the U.S. government about anything. <laughs> um, comment last week on my YouTube channel from uh, Mark Howery about my Tanaka. I think I got a copy of it here. Let me get it. I'll just read you part of it. Mark says, you showed us your Tanaka that's the big black tank on my roof. But you didn't explain its purpose. 
if I understand correctly, the water pressure is pretty low in Mexico, and because of that, the distribution is somewhat unreliable. And if somebody near you, especially upstream, uses a lot of water, it may reduce the pressure to the point that you don't get enough to do anything useful. Uh, close. So let me explain for Mark's benefit and the rest of you exactly how the system works. It isn't that the water pressure gets low. It's that the city doesn't pump 24-7. It only pumps for a few hours a day. The reason that we have then a reservoir under the ground um, about the size of a swimming pool sometimes is called an aljibe. And in a lot of construction, it's underneath the garage or the driveway. Uh, it's just a convenient place to put it. And uh, the city pumps water into that to fill your aljibe, and it can be several thousand gallons. Then you have another pump that pumps from your underground reservoir up to a tank on the roof. And the tank on the roof, the big black tank on my roof, is called a Tanaco. And the Tanaco, my Tanaco is 750 liters. Well, what that does is it, it uses electricity then to pump the water up on the roof. And because it's on the roof, it's up high and you get water pressure from gravity, which is the same way towns in the United States work with a water tower. You get this big water tower on the hill outside of town and everybody gets water pressure because of gravity. Well, there are other systems that have then another pressure pump beyond the Tanaco, between your faucet in the kitchen and the Tanaco, that gives you pressure. But the whole reason for the system is that the city doesn't have to pump water pressure all the time, only a few hours a day to fill up the Alhe base, which then in turn use electricity and pumps to pump it to the roof, and gravity brings it back down to make pressure in your faucet. That's the system. Anyway, um, yeah, there's another thing with regard to that about drinking water in Mexico. Um, because they don't pump all the time, and I've talked about this in videos before, when they're pumping, there's old piping and there's leaks in the pipe. And when you have pressure in the pipe, that leak is spraying water out. Well, when, they sh when they're not pumping... The water is draining down from all of the pipes up the hill to the bottom. Now, I very rarely don't have water in my pipes because I'm at the bottom of the hill. I'm on the lake, and there are mountains behind me that have houses on them. So when the city stops pumping, I'm still getting pressure because all of the piping is still up the hill from me. Anyway... When they're pumping and there's pressure in the pipes, the old pipes have leaks and they spray the water out. Well, when they stop pumping and the water is draining down to me from up there, those same leaks aren't spraying water out. They're sucking dirt in. That's why you don't drink the water in Mexico. Other thing on my mind is a lot of people around here are talking about getting their new tax ID number that the Mexican... Uh, government has decided everybody needs, including including foreign uh, expats. So in the Guadalajara Reporter today, there's an article about it. And I tried doing some research, and I didn't find out any more than you're going to hear right here. Uh, not yet. Um, while the requirement is obligatory for all Mexicans and foreign residents, no one expects everyone to register immediately since backlogs at the tax office are anticipated. However, experts in the field say there are certain people who uh, do not earn any income but should consider registering quickly. Uh, people who are buying or selling property in Mexico, opening a new bank account, or possibly signing up with a new uh, electricity meter or water utility um, service. Basically, the rest of the article says that um, nobody expects everybody to do it and that the backlog at the tax office is going to be um, long. My guess is that there will be 
uh, Mexicans who provide a service to help you do this. Right now, from here at uh, Lakeside, I believe that it requires, and I'm not totally certain about this, but I believe it requires a trip up to Guadalajara to the tax office to get registered and get a number. But like your immigration service or signing up for government health insurance, there are always people who provide a service around here on the north shore of Lake Chapala that will help you get these things that you need and facilitate it. Uh, <clears throat> I've been through that process many times with my uh, immigration. Um, I am uh, immigrata permanente, so I don't have to do it anymore. But for years I was temporal, and before that they had a different system, and I had to do it every year. And I paid somebody to do it for me, to stand in line and to do the paperwork and make sure that you got, you know, six copies of that thing that you needed and four copies of this other thing and you didn't stand in line for two hours and then figure out you didn't have all the right forms. It was well worth your time to um, pay for somebody to take care of those things for you. And that happened with my immigration service, with my registering for the old guy's card, I call it in Mexico, it's in a palm, uh, which gives you, you know, discounts if you're a senior, and another one called the DEEF card, um, and also uh, government health insurance. All of those things, there are services to help you get them and to facilitate doing what you need to do. And I'm... My guess, as I said, it's a guess, but I guess, I'm guessing that services will arise to help you get this new card. A tax ID number in Mexico for um, even foreign residents. Uh, sorry, I can't be more informative about that, but I don't think anybody's well informed at this point. Here's another thing that caught my attention in the news, and it, it caught my attention because it reminded me of something that happened to me. So uh, we're talking about a travel story, J.C. travel stories from a while ago. Uh, this is the news article. There are 64 points at which stolen fuel, that'll be gasoline, can be bought on the Mexico City Carrero Highway compared to just 15 gas stations. So there are 64 places where you can buy fuel that's stolen out of the pipelines, um, where there are only 15 gas stations in the same distance. Uh, vendors of stolen fuel set up makeshift distribution points on the side of the highway where they sell 25 liters of gasoline for 13 pesos, uh, which is uh, 66 cents a liter. So... Four times that, it would be about three something a gallon instead of 450 a gallon. Now, a discount of over 40% compared to gas station prices. They also sell 25 liter containers of diesel at similar discounts. So, years ago, I was coming south from the United States to here, Lake Chapala. And I was about an hour north of Mazatlan, and I didn't think I was going to make it to the next gas station. So at every toll booth on the autopista, uh, there's a place to stop and buy ice cream bar or whatever, and also there's a restroom. So I'm really worried about my gas that I'm going to run out. And I see a Pemex truck uh, just pulling off, and I pull up behind it. And I think, uh, and the guy jumps out, and he goes in the restroom. And I'm thinking, I need to ask him, where's the next gas station? I mean, who, who would know better where there's a gas station than the guy driving the Pemex gas truck? So I follow him in the restroom, and... Um, we're at urinals, a couple of urinals between us, and, and I ask him, how far is the next gas station? And we have a short conversation about why I ask. I'm about to run out of gas. I'm not sure I'm going to make it. And he tells me how far it is, and I'm even more sure that I'm not going to make it. 
So um, he finishes up and he leaves. And I'm still worried. So when I go out, he's standing um, out there by my van. And he says, um, follow me. I'm getting off the autopista in about three kilometers. Um, we'll get you some gas. <laughs> you know, there's always that possibility that you're going to get taken somewhere and, and that's going to be the end of your time on this earth. <laughs> but you, you got to put yourself out there. You got to step out of your comfort zone if you're ever going to have any fun in life. So I follow him. And uh, the big gas truck, big tanker truck, it wasn't a double tanker, just a single tanker, but it was a tanker truck. He pulls off, not off of a uh, 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 an exit on the freeway just off on a dirt road and we go about I don't know a kilometer and, to a ranch and um, truck pulls up beside the barn he hops out and goes inside comes back out and he says drive over there and he tells me where to go and as I drive up to the end of the barn a little door about, I don't know, about a foot square <laughs> opens up and a hose comes out. And he takes the hose and he puts about a quarter of a tank of gas in my van. And um, at this point, I'm, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> and I got my money clip out and asked him, you know, how much I owed him. And he said, don't worry about it. Enjoy your trip. I love Mexico. Uh, I'm not suggesting that you should participate in illegal activities. I'm just telling you, I love Mexico. <laughs> for, for the record, the gas story was like 18 years ago. I'm hoping that my participation in the illegal gasoline trade, um, the, the statute of limitations has expired. <laughs> Telephone's ringing. Be right back. The other thing that's on my mind today, um, and it has to do with living in Mexico and the cost of living. And I was watching some uh, news and video about uh, people exiting California. And w what I was watching was about how they're leaving California and going to different states. And it was about how many Californians had gone to Arizona and Utah and Idaho and other places. And the reasons that they were uh, moving. Uh, cost of living, um, freedom from government regulations, uh, less of a tax bite for big companies or even for individuals with property taxes. All of those reasons, and there are multiple reasons and different reasons for different people, but it, it occurred to me that um, the reason that people are exiting California in droves is the same reason that I exited the USA 20 years ago to come to Mexico. Less of a tax bite in property taxes. Um, cost of living is better. Um, you get more bang for your buck. All of those same reasons. Oh, <laughs> big one. Uh, less government uh, oversight for your daily life. Anyway, uh, I'm not here to bash the USA or California. But the fact is that um, it's not a perfect world anywhere. But some places can be better in some ways. Thanks for being with me today. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.